All right, Sully, first off, uh, thanks for taking time out of the day to join us. Uh, man, let's just take a look back. 11-5 uh, and five on the season, another uh, North Division championship underneath your belt. Uh, just kind of requ uh, reflect real quickly on the season. Yeah, I mean, you know, it was it was a great season. I mean, 11-5, 7-1 and five, and one in the conference, you know, won our first seven conference games. You know, we started off, we had a rough start. We uh, lost Pearl River and Southwest, and I think we kind of identified most of our problems, and from that point forward, you know, we pretty much uh, we pretty much won most of the games we played. We had one two to one loss to Jones in there, and then, you know, unfortunately, a semifinal loss to Jones again two to one on a last second goal yet again. Uh, you know, the, the state tournament this year was really four really really good teams, and Jones was at home. I think it was the edge for them, and uh, you know anybody could have won it. I mean, Jones had a really good team this year, and you know we did too. Uh, so, but we felt really good about our year. Back to back division titles for these sophomores, great accomplishment. So we're really excited about the year and, uh, you know, looking forward to the future. Well, Sully, let's just kind of talk about it. You talked about you lose those uh, matches at Pearl River to a really good Southwest team, and then you rattle off six straight. Uh, at what point in the season, I guess you can say, obviously but preseason you know what you have, but at what point in the season do you realize, you know, this team could be special? Yeah, I mean, really, once, once we got to the Heinz game and then the way we took care of business, the way we came out, uh, you know, we scored right away. Even though we gave one up, we then kind of scored our next two or three pretty quickly. And the intensity and the work rate and everything that we put into that game and just, you know, beating a, a big rival like Hans, a really good school, I think that's when we kind of knew, you know, that this could be something special. I mean, we really might win a few games this year and, and things are really starting to go our way. So I think that might have been, you know, one of the turning points to, to make us believe that, you know, hey, we're going to be pretty good. And then uh, after they talked about that 2-1 to one hiccup against uh, Jones, you reeled off five more wins after that. So this team really just kind of had that hard-nosed, refuse-to-lose attitude this year. Yeah, I mean, one of the big things about this group this year, uh, we scored first in most of our matches. I mean, even in the game we lost to Jones in the regular season and the playoffs, we took a lead on them one nothing, and ultimately lost 2-1. to one. But it was key for us to, you know, and maybe in difference than the year or two past, we took leads on people, and we did a good job at you know holding on to those leads, extending the leads. Uh, this group was a group of fighters. I mean, very sophomore laden class, and uh, which is great for experience. You know, it makes it uh, a little bit tougher when you get into next year, of course. But it's JUCO. That happens all the time. Sometimes you have big freshman classes, big sophomore. It's always nice to have a good group with a lot of good leadership. And I think the loss last year to Gulf Coast in the semifinals was a catalyst as well. I mean. You know, they, they kind of whooped their butt a little bit, and it was something that the guys just, you know, kind of went back to every once in a while and thinking about, and I think that pushed them as well to try to, you know, try to get the ring this year. And unfortunately, it came up a little short, but, I mean, I couldn't ask for much more out of these guys. They, they fought every game. Well, Coach, uh, as you talked about, back-to-back -back North Division championships had to be a little extra sweet. There's no love loss between ICC and Hines uh, whenever uh, we take to the pitch, but had to be a little extra sweet uh, securing that North Division yeah, title at Hines. It really was. I mean, uh, you know, they're, they've been they've been unquestionably the best team in our division. You know, for most of the last two decades. Uh, you know, we've we've we like to think we're starting to catch up to them, and uh, you know, we're giving them good games and competing with them and beating them, and uh, and getting to win the division title on their field was pretty sweet because they've done it to us before. So. It was nice to be able to celebrate like that. And, I mean, just, just watching my guys and the way that they were excited and celebrating, I mean, that was, that was a lot of fun for me as well, uh, just, seeing, just seeing the excitement on their faces and knowing what they'd accomplished. Well, Coach, uh, obviously a season you have your highs, your lows, and your funny moments as well. Uh, just kind of reflect back, maybe, uh, of course, none of the players know you're going to be able to talk about this until they watch this. Uh, <laughs> kind of take a look back and maybe just point out a few moments that kind of stuck out to you. Uh, one, this you know could be the highlight of the year, or two, just some of those moments that the guys just maybe hope you don't talk about. <laughs> well, most of those we don't want to talk about. We we probably won't talk about those. But uh, you know, as far as like highlights of the year go, I mean, uh, I really at, at home, um, you know, getting the big win against Hines that way. Uh, and, I mean, I know we just talked about these things, but. Another highlight was being able to win at Heinz. That's one of the toughest places to play. Uh, you know, I, I think one of the most fun games all year that I think all the guys will look back on was the Andrew game at home. Uh, that game was a back and forth. I mean, I think it was like one to one, two to two, three to three. Uh, we even had uh, Brendan take a 65-yard shot right at the halftime whistle. 
And I mean, you have to see it to believe it. I mean, it hit off the crossbar, the goalkeeper turned around, it just fell right into his hands, and then the buzzer went off, and you're like, well, oh my God, that, how's that even possible? <laughs> so, I mean, it was, it, and then, you know, there were so many red cards in that game, yeah. uh, and then Clayton scoring a game, winning goal, you know, right there, and I think the 108th minute. So, I mean, that one was kind of one that we'll remember that was fun. Um, you know, even the playoff game with the loss, I mean, it's one of those tough memories, but mm -hmm. I mean, that was, if you enjoy watching soccer, that was a great game to watch. You know, it just unfortunately, the good guys came up short. But uh, there's a lot of good memories. I mean, you know, th this was a good, fun group of guys. You know, stayed out of trouble for the most part. I mean, you know, boys will be boys. But yeah. for the most part, stayed out of trouble. I mean, I have to say, you know, I'm sure they'll all watch this. So, you know, Brian Huckabee is definitely uh, the team uh, – I don't know, prankster, jokester, funny guy. I mean, just pretty much everything Brian Huckabee does can make you laugh. And uh, and, and to his credit, that, that guy from day one to the end, he really started to become a, a player that we could count on and use, and he did a good job for us. He, he was still funny while he was doing it, but uh, but he, he had a good year as well. So I think those are some of the some of the things. Hey, Coach, what would be a message to your sophomores as a uh – Kind of, they've left a great legacy here at the college and the program. What would be your message to the sophomores going forward? Well, I mean, first off, you know, I just want to thank them all for coming and playing two years for me. I mean, this whole group has been a great group. A lot of them from Amory, got some Tupelo guys. I mean, it, it, uh, it has been a really fun group. You know, we're going to miss the our international guys and guys from Alabama, and all of them, I believe, are going to go on to do big things. This group's really smart. They have a good team GPA going. I think we have a shot to get back in the top 10 again this year. So, you know, I want to wish them the best. And uh, I know some of them are going to continue their soccer careers and some of them are going to probably go on to be lawyers and doctors and that kind of thing. So, you know, we're definitely going to be keeping our eyes on them from afar and, and wish them the best of luck and hope everything goes well. And then for your freshmen, I know you want to challenge them to uh, meet that level of expectations that you guys set this year. Just kind of talk about challenging your freshmen to get ready for next season. Yeah, I mean, we... Touched on that the moments after the Jones game, the first meeting after when we got back. Uh, you know, there's a lot to live up to. I mean, these guys have won two division titles in a row. Um, you know, I told the freshmen, I was like, well, I said, we didn't win that last conference game, so we went 7-1. and one. So I said, there's you something to shoot for. Now you can look to try and go 8-0 oh next year, which is really tough. I mean, our our division in our league is good. Trying to go 8-0 oh is, is pretty tough. And, uh, you know, it, it leaves something something for the freshmen to shoot for. But, uh, you know, the freshmen know there's going to be a lot of freshmen coming in when they turn into sophomores that will be hungry like they were. So it, uh, it should be another good year. we got a great recruiting class lined up and a bunch of them that will be signing over the next couple of days and weeks. And we're looking forward to 2019 already. All right, Coach, well, let's take a quick time out. We're going to come back and talk about some postseason honors uh, here on the show. So uh, you got a few more minutes to hang out yep. with me? Absolutely. All right, we'll be back with more right after this. This broadcast of ICC Athletics is being brought to you by Renaissance Bank, Little Caesars, Davis Ford, The Sonic of Fulton, Tupelo Coca-Cola Bottling Works, The Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, First American National Bank, The ICC BSU, Your Itawama County Farm Bureau Agent, Joey Cox, Cagle Eye Center, The ICC Foundation, The Bank of Oklahoma, and The ICC Alumni Association. And welcome back to, uh, I guess we got to call this kind of an impromptu uh, postseason uh, review show for soccer. Sully and uh, David uh, didn't really know about this, and to be honest with you, I didn't know about it until I came up with it last night about 9 o'clock. <laughs> so, uh, Coach, uh, a lot of guys getting some postseason honors, and let's start with our All-Stars this year. Uh, Ryan Parker, Brandon Kane, and Luan Balicete, uh getting those uh, All-Star spots. Easily could have been three or four more guys off this team that are deserving of that. Just talk about the All-Stars. Yeah, absolutely. I, I do want to say there's a couple of guys that, you know, we would have loved to have seen get a chance, but I, I guess we can't make up the whole team. <laughs> as much as I'd like to, I, I'd love to see us you know, get a few more. But uh, all three of those guys very deserving. I mean, Brendan uh, scored 25-ish goals over his career here. Uh, Luan has kind of just been our go-to, kind of do-everything kind of guy. I mean, he's uh, I think he's jumped up to third on the all-time career assists. Uh, he had about eight goals this year. I mean, he was pretty much a free kick specialist. Everybody shuddered when he got a free kick within 20 yards. And uh, 
and then Ryan just kind of being a field general in the back and just kind of directing traffic and winning every ball that was back there. I mean, these are three guys that really helped put us, you know, where we've where we've been over the last couple of years. So we're we're proud for them and look for them to have a big game. Maybe one of them can get the MVP. All right, and then you got four players selected all state: uh, Parker and and uh, Kane, along with uh, Clayton O'Daniel and Brian Heredia. Uh, four very deserving players there. Oh, absolutely. I mean, again, you know, we've talked about Brandon. We talked to our, uh, uh, Ryan and uh, with Brian. I mean, Brian's like, you know, everybody I talk to about him, I'm like, well, he's a little guy, but I'm telling you, he plays like he's three times that size. And he's probably one of the biggest warriors I've ever had. That dude got hurt so many times this year, it is beyond belief. Ankles and arms, and he's had broken noses. I mean, he, over two years, has been an absolute warrior. You know, you couldn't ask much more out of that guy. Uh, the fact that he played our playoff game was amazing. I mean, he looked like he destroyed his ankle like a week before that game, and he rehabbed like crazy, and he made it back, and he made a difference and, and almost helped us pull it off. But... Uh, but great player there, and Clayton O'Daniel. I mean, it's always nice to see a freshman getting honored. Uh, to, uh, co tied for the lead with goals, had 11 goals this year with Brendan. Uh, you know, I mean, 11 goals in 15 games, that's not too bad for a freshman. We're going to look for, you know, bigger things out of him next year. Hopefully he's going to hit 15, 16 goals next year. So another very deserving. And finally, uh, Luan Balachete. Uh, all region, uh, big honor there because uh, I'm telling you this is probably the most stacked I've seen this league in years in my at least my nine years here uh, involved with the soccer program. Uh, pretty pretty uh, pretty good award there for Balachete. Yeah, uh, you hit the nail on the head. You know, as we were doing our voting, it was really tough this year because there wasn't like last year there was a Jordan Hall that went on to Stanford and he's even doing big things there. We didn't have a Jordan Hall that was just like a 35 goal guy. We had guys that scored a lot of goals in the league, but we had a lot of really good players in this league. And for Juan to be named one of the best 11, I mean, that says a lot about him and, and his teammates. I mean, because he doesn't do what he does without his teammates. And, uh, you know, he had a great year. He started a little slow, but uh, once he got going, I mean, he was a terror for everybody. And, uh, you know, it was nice to see him get rewarded for that with uh, one of the All-Region Awards. Well, Sully, before I let you go, and we're going to hear from those uh, guys talking about their postseason honors, uh, Lee Adams had a chance to catch up with him earlier today. Uh, before I let you go, just uh, one final time, I know there's a lot of people, uh, fans, that you would like to thank. And uh, don't feel like you got to name them one by one because <laughs> you'll know you'll leave somebody out. But just kind of take a moment to uh, just thank everyone that uh, helped make this year a little extra special. Yeah, I mean, this was a great year, and everything went as well as it could go 99.9% .9 of the time, which is always nice. I mean, fans travel great. I mean, we can't thank our parents and our fans enough for coming out and supporting us. I mean, at the, anybody that was at the Jones game, we had about the same kind of crowd yes. that Jones did. I mean, it was just as loud for us as it was for them. And that's a four-hour trip. I mean, that's one of the things that really made me proud to see, you know, these – these kids getting supported, and we want to really thank the parents and, and all the fans that came down. I mean, our bus driver's always getting us there safe, and, you know, our grounds crew at the at back at the house keeping our field in playable shape. And, uh, I mean, really just everybody. I mean, I'm sure I'm going to leave some people out, but uh, it takes a village. I mean, one person can't do all this. It takes a lot of people to make this thing run well. I mean, to you guys, the sports department, for broadcasting games and getting all our information out. I mean, realistically, it takes a lot of people, and uh, we had a lot of good help this year, and it helped uh, make this year what it was. Well, Sully, appreciate you taking time out of your day and uh, try to catch you off guard, man. You're a pro. Uh, <laughs> you can knock this out of the park every time, and uh, looking forward to another exciting season next year. Absolutely. Thank you. The newly formed Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi wants to make sure you are receiving the best orthopedic care possible. Our staff of seven experienced board certified surgeons specialize in a specific area of the body and can treat you with the newest and latest technology available to fast track your road to recovery. Call us for same day appointments at 662-377-BONE and come see us at Gloucester Creek Village in Tupelo at the Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi. Our specialty is you. All right, Brandon, uh, big honor being named MACJC All-State and an All-Star. Just talk about how that feels. Uh, you know, like, like you said, it's a huge honor. Uh, you know, we really worked hard this season. We had some really good results. Ultimately, didn't end the way we wanted. But I had a good team behind me, so it was really easy to be able to get these honors. Okay, Brian, uh, just talk about how it feels to be named MACJC All-State. Uh, it's just a great honor, and I'm just thankful for the coaches and my teammates that helped me throughout the way because I couldn't have done it without them. And it's just been a great ride, and season didn't end the way we wanted, but I'm just thankful for the season. 
All right, Clayton, uh, being uh, honored in the league announcement today of MACJC All-State, talk about how that feels. Yeah, it's a great honor, and I just have to give all the thanks and praise to my teammates and coaches. And, uh, you know, the season didn't end the way we wanted it to, but uh, with me being a freshman, going into next year, our goal is to uh, win the state championship, and that's more important than any individual goal. So that's our, that's our goal for next year and my goal. All right, Ryan, uh, big honor for you as well, being named a MACJC All-Star as well as All-State. Just talk about how that feels. Yeah, it's a great achievement for myself, but um, couldn't take any credit away from the other boys on the team and the other boys on the team who also made the All-State and the All-Region team. Um, then the North, Star, the North All-Star game should be a bit of fun. Uh, kick around with some of the other sophomores in the North against the South, and hopefully the North can come out on top. All right, Luan, uh, two honors, uh, postseason honors for you, MACJC All-Star, but more importantly, a NJCAA All-Region 23. Uh, just talk about how that feels. Oh, it's a great honor, but I couldn't do it by myself. I got to thank my teammates, coach, and also my family back home because they, they always supported me. So it feels, it feels really good. When I think of potential, I think of a matchstick. When a matchstick reaches its potential, it releases a flame that ignites everything around it. 2018 brings new potential for you and your life at Itawamba Community College, where you are each empowered to do great things. You can be better, accomplish more, and live a life that is above the bar. Your potential is here.